to the, here we go. Let's take a little trip to Mars, the fourth planet from the sun that follows Mercury, Venus, Earth, and then Mars. So Mars is known as the red planet for its slightly reddish hue as seen from Earth. It's about half the size of Earth, but it's one and a half times as far from Earth as the sun is. So it gets a lot less sunlight than Mars than we do here at Earth. But it has some very significant features on the surface. There's something called Olympus Mons, which is a mountain. It's three times taller than the largest mountain we have here on Earth, Mount Everest. And it has a big valley called the Valley of the Marin, Turbalis Marineris. It's about 10 times bigger than Grand Canyon. If you fitted that on the United States, it's go from California almost all the way across to the East Coast. However, the atmosphere of Mars is considerably less than the atmosphere here on Earth. It's about 1% of the pressure at the surface of Mars that we have here at Earth, and it's almost all carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide we know here as the gases that we exhale from our bodies. We bring in oxygen and the body use that oxygen to exhale carbon dioxide. Well, on Mars, the atmosphere is almost all carbon dioxide, which of course would make breathing on Mars absolutely impossible because we can't live with carbon dioxide. Well, plants like carbon dioxide, they would thrive very nicely on Mars. The temperatures on Mars are highly variable, but they're very low because Mars is so far away from the sun. The average noon temperature, or the highest noon temperature recorded, I believe, is about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. This would be at the equator. Of course, as the seasons occur, the equator doesn't change very much. But it goes down to 240 degrees below zero on the winter poles. The average temperature is 65 degrees below zero. Now, the average temperature on Earth, if you take all the conditions on Earth, is about 60 degrees below zero. So that means on Mars, it's 125 degrees colder on the average of Mars, and that's mainly due to the fact that Mars is one and a half times farther away from the sun, so it gets a lot less energy from the sun as we do. Oops. Well, maybe I should use this one. Okay, there we go. This is called a topographical map of Mars. And if you can see up here, I can get around here and point to it. The colors have to do with the elevation above the lowest level. Now, blue up on the top here is the lowest elevation. That's not water. It's just that the people that made this map chose blue as the lowest elevation. But that is the lowest level. Now, up the top here is called the polar ice cap. Now, that we knew for a long time that there was water there that's frozen solid because it's so cold on water. That's not the water we're talking about today. There's a cap in the North Pole and the South Pole of Mars. Now the other colors, if you go to green, yellow, um, to the red, and white, you go to higher elevations. Now this guy, uh, over, uh, okay, this is uh, the, uh, called the Olympus Mons, and that's the highest mountain there. You can see the shadows on the side. And then these three are called the Tharsis Volcanoes, and they're big volcanic mountains here. I'm not sure about this guy up here, whether it's a volcano or a chipmunk. I'll let you decide that. <laughs> <laughs> but then, the Valley of the Mariners, it looks like a big gash here on the side of Mars. It's only surface split open at one time, way in the deep distance past. And you can see there's blue at the bottom, which means that's the lowest elevation. So that's a very, very deep valley. That is so big that if you were in the United States, it would go from California all the way across over to the, to the East Coast. So those are the major features of Mars. So now let's go on and if I push the right button here. Okay, so these polar ice caps, if all the ice in those polar caps melted, it would cover the planet with a depth of about 80 feet of water. Now there's a lot more water on Earth. 70% of Earth is covered with water, but the depth is much, much greater. But of course, Mars is so cold, so that those ice caps stay as ice caps all the time. So. Now, there's other evidence, though, for water having existed in the liquid state on Mars in the deep past. There's erosion in the Valley of the Mariners. I'm going to show you a slide in just a minute that shows the erosion on the uh, side of, of the Valley of the Mariners. There are geologic formations, that are, such as enormous outflow channels that on Earth are caused by floods, by river valley networks, and by deltas. Same kind of patterns are seen on Mars. So that would indicate that in the past, there may have been right on Mars. So that would mean that sometime in the past, Mars would have had been warmer. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So why is finding water on Mars significant? 
Water is the essence of life. In order for life to exist, water must be present. So finding water on Mars is a precursor to finding life on Mars. This is the picture of the Valley of the Mariners that I uh, talked about. You see all these channels here? This type of terrain is actually formed by running water. So it's formed that way at Earth. And so the thought is that they're probably formed that way by running water on Mars. It's a little hard to find another way to do it. They have run other liquids, maybe they could run around, but we don't know about any other liquids on Mars. So, that's some indirect evidence, at least the water existed on Mars sometime in the past. Well, of course, you can always find water on Mars. It could exist anywhere else on the surface of Mars other than the polar caps. Well, NASA decided to send a mission to Mars called the Phoenix Mission. The idea was to answer that question. Is there any other place to find water on Mars? So the theme of the mission was called Follow the Water. There was a spacecraft that was a lander. You could have a lander or you could have a rover. A rover has wheels and a motor to drive it around. This was a lander. It pops down one place and it just stays there. But it had a robotic arm, like something designed after the human arm, and it had a scoop on the end of that arm in order to dig trenches in the surface of the planet to, uh, for why? To look for water to look for, determine the mineralogy of the materials that make up the surface of Mars, to look for hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons are the building blocks of life. They're hydrogen carbon atoms with a lot of other things, but they're sort of the building blocks of life. They should be on Mars. We have, of course, we, we are made of hydrocarbons. There are lots here on Earth. The other thing is to assess the potential habitability of Mars for possible human exploration in the future. The spacecraft was launched in August of 2007. It took nine months to get to Mars and landed in May of 2008. It landed in that one of the far north in that blue region up there, north of the Arctic Circle on Mars. Now, there were six instruments on board the spacecraft. The one we're going to talk about today is called TETON. It stands for Thermal Evolved Gas Analyzer. T can consist of two parts. The T stands for the, a T is the thermal analyzer. It's a set of uh, eight very small, high temperature ovens capable of heating our surface samples up to about 1,000 degrees Celsius or 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit. This extra one was built at the University of Arizona. <coughs> the EGA, or the evolved gas analyzer is a mass spectrometer. If you're a mass spectrometer, mass spectrometers have the capability of taking a mixture of gases, sorting them out, and identifying the constituents that make up this mixture of gases. This instrument was built by my group at the University of Texas at Dallas under my direction. Here's a picture of the spacecraft as it was assembled in the Lockheed Martin plant in Denver, Colorado. This is the spacecraft here itself. It's about six feet across this way. And these are the solar panels. They were folded out like these panels. So they were collapsed down on the trip and they were folded out. They collect the sun's light, convert it to electric current to keep the batteries stuck. And we have like the cars around here. You know. This right here is the master counter box. And right there, you see others. That's the key of that emission in there. This thing right through here is called a bio bag. A uh, bio bag was the housing for the arm and the scoop. They were sterilized. They were built in a laboratory here on Earth. They were sterilized and then packed in that bio bag and then mounted on the space structure. The reason for that is you're very protective about Mars. We don't want to take things to Mars, any kind of living organisms that could possibly cause life to exist on Mars. Sometimes later we find life in, in, on Mars and say, oh, Maybe we brought it from Earth. So we're very careful about things going to Mars. That scoop on that thing is going to dig in the surface of Mars. So it had to be sterilized. So there are no possible microorganisms or bugs of any kind that can be sent to Mars. So that is uh, uh, all spacecraft go to Mars. Anything is going to touch the surface except the landing parts of the spacecraft itself. And anything is going to dig into Mars itself is uh, always sterilized. So that was this bio bag. Okay, now I'm going to push the right button here.
this is a drawing of what the space craft might <coughs> look like on the surface of Mars. Obviously, we don't have pictures separated from the space craft uh, pictures on Mars. So you see the scoop is dumping some dirt into one of the ovens, and the little box in front of that is the mass spectrometer, and that stand on the left side holds the cameras. Every spacecraft on Mars can go to any planet always has a stereo camera, two cameras to take pictures in stereo of the surface of the planet itself. Okay, so now, the scoop would dig trenches in the surface of Mars. So on Sol 20, it dug this set of this trench. Now what is the Sol? The Sol is a Mars day. Mars day is 40 minutes longer than the Earth day, so to distinguish when we're talking about days on Mars, the people doing the Mars things came up with the name Sol as a name for the day on Mars. Rather than just talk about day, I can talk about Earth day and Mars day. So Sol, Sol. 20 days after landing, Sol 20, this trench was dug, and it exposed some white stuff. Well, what is the white stuff? Well, the white stuff could be ice, but there are a lot of things that are white. Salt is white, sugar is white. There are a lot of white substances. And so we couldn't just say, well, that's ice. We had to do an analysis to find out. So we called it the white stuff. Four Mars days later, on Sol 24, you see there's quite a difference. Some of that white stuff is gone. As you can see, there's a lot more white stuff there. Some of it's missing here. The intensity there is less. And I should point out, down here, there are three little <coughs> modules of something. There are probably chunks of ice. But they're gone four days later. And quite a bit of the ice is gone. Or if it's ice, well, no. Ice sublimates. That means it goes from a solid to a gas without going through the liquid. It melts and evaporates all in one step, called sublimation. The process, the temperatures and the pressures on Mars allow ice to do that. Now, here on Earth, ice has to melt to become water, and the water has to heat it up and then evaporate or boil the up a gas for steam. But on Mars, it can go right from a solid directly to the gas, called sublimation. Dry ice does that here on the surface of Dry ice is a carbon dioxide that's frozen. Dry ice never melts. If you have a piece of dry ice, it just disappears. It sublimates. OK, so this is first evidence that that white stuff is probably water, because salts don't sublimate at the temperature and pressure on Mars. So this is the first evidence that that stuff, the white stuff, is actually water ice. Okay, how else did we discover that this was water? Well, the scoop that uh, uh, put some of the stuff out of the surface there, dumped it in one of the ovens. This occurred at about 20 degrees below zero in Celsius, about 30 degrees below zero Fahrenheit, which was the temperature where the spacecraft was sitting. As the temperature of the oven came up to zero degrees, the only point of water, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, the oven absorbed a lot more energy. It takes energy to melt something to change from a solid to a liquid. And so it takes energy to melt that ice, and the temperature will rise until all the stuff is melted. And that's what was happening at zero degrees. Now the indication that that stuff was water, or frozen water. And then the pressure, the gas is coming out of the oven, increased, reflected in the vessel there. So the pressure increased. Another indication that was something was coming out of that soil material. And then some of that gas was transferred over to the mass spectrometer, and the mass spectrometer identified the gas as H2O, one atom of oxygen, two atoms of hydrogen. That's the chemical formula for water. So that was direct evidence that we actually found water on the surface of Mars, which was the first time that water was actually identified on the surface of Mars. Of course, it was like two inches below the surface because that's where it was expected. Before that, it was a spacecraft that orbited around Mars and it detected the presence of the possibility of water being just below the surface confirmed that and actually found the water. So what else did we find? We also found calcium carbonate, which is limestone. There's a lot of it here on Earth. It was expected on Mars. And sure enough, we identified quite a bit of calcium carbonate or limestone in the soil materials on Mars. And we did this because putting that in the oven and heating it up as high as 725 degrees, it decomposes, produces carbon dioxide, water, and other materials in the mass spectrometer. Identified those at the right temperature uh, confirming that it was calcium carbonate. Carbonates also require water for their formation. They don't just form by themselves. You have to have liquid water. So this is an indication that way in the past sometime, Mars must have been much warmer and wetter in order for these uh, 
limestone and things before. So there's other evidence for water in the existence in Mars in the past. However, we also discovered magnesium perchlorate. Magnesium perchlorate was not expected on Mars. So what is magnesium perchlorate? Well, MGH is magnesium, Cl is chlorine, and there's more oxygen atoms making up that molecule. There's also sodium perchlorate. The normal chlorates have only three oxygen atoms in the molecule. This has an extra oxygen atom. That's why it's called a perchlorate. Now that gives us a unique property to that material. So what's the significance of finding these perchlorate salts on Mars? Well, perchlorates have electrical chemical properties that make them an energy source for microbial life, for metabolism of microbes. Microbes have been found in areas of Earth containing perchlorate salts, and it's known that some microbes actually use perchlorates as a food source. Another thing that perchlorates do, they attract water. They're hygroscopic. And so the perchlorates will get water and make a brine, a, a salty water material. Now, microbes have been found in Antarctic soils here on Earth, way down in, in, in the Antarctica, where the temperature approaches that of temperature on Mars. It's very cold down in Antarctica. And so the conditions of microbes being able to live in very cold temperatures, maybe not as cold as, as some of the surface of Mars, but at least in Antarctica, so these are conditions that indicate that it's a possibility that life could exist on Mars, but we have not found the microbes on Mars. More recently, from the Phoenix mission, these pictures were taken by the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter spacecraft. The camera on board there took these pictures of what's called the Gaia Crater. Now, the Gaia Crater is a very large, deep crater on the surface of Mars. And it was found that these streets on the surface wall on the side of that crater, they uh, seem to flow down in the warmer time. The temperature is like, like 10 degrees below zero. That's warm for Mars. 10 degrees below zero is warm for Mars. But then when it gets cold in the winter, winter time, temperatures drop down to 100, 150 below zero, and they didn't see any of that flow in the water. So that would indicate that maybe that's a water or brine or something flowing down on the sides of that crater. Well, it turns out the material there was identified as a grinding liquid water. And the salt in that water was identified as a perchlorate salt. It's the same stuff that Phoenix found in the northern part of the region. It's greater down farther south than where we were. When salt is discovered it's dissolved in water, the freezing point of water is lowered quite a bit. That's the reason we put salt, maybe not so much here in Texas. I come from Minnesota. But a lot of salt put on the roads in Minnesota because that lowers the melting point of the ice so that the ice could melt at temperatures below the freezing point of normal water. That's why you get rid of the ice off the roads. Well, with salty water on Mars, that would mean that the temperature was much below the normal freezing point of water. That's why at 10 degrees below zero, this stuff could run down the side of that uh, crater wall. When the temperature is down 100 degrees below zero, that's way below the freezing point of the so it would stop flowing. So that makes a lot of sense. However, the perchlorate salts are toxic to humans. We could not drink water with those salts in it, particularly perchlorates. And so they would not be a good source for drinking water on Mars. So this does not bode well for astronauts that might be going to Mars in the 20s or 30s or 40s or whatever it's possibly planned that people would go to Mars. So there have to be another source for drinking water on Mars with this stuff wouldn't work very well. So now let's talk a little bit about the habitability of Mars. The landing site for Phoenix has many characteristics necessary to support life. The soil is slightly alkaline, it's dominated by carbonated perchlorate salts, and alkaline soils are great for growing asparagus. In fact, when they announced that we had perchlorates on Mars, somebody immediately put off t-shirts showing asparagus growing out of the surface of Mars. <laughs> Maybe astronauts who like the asparagus that could be a food source on Mars. You could have to have a greenhouse to perform that. Chemical elements such as calcium, magnesium, potassium, sodium, and chlorine needed to support life are present on Mars. And we know now that water exists near the surface, and we found them for chlorine salts. And so <coughs> there are sources <coughs> for microbial 
of life do exist because there are energy sources for that. So conditions exist on Mars to have supported life. But today the surface temperatures are way too low to support life as we know it here on Earth. So let's talk a little bit about how Mars could have been warmer in the past. First and Mars both have their axis of rotation called the spin axis. It's tipped a little bit. If you see a globe of Earth, it's always leaning over to the side. It's never straight up and down. This is always tipped. That's because the axis of rotation of Earth is tipped 23 and a half degrees from the plane of the orbit around the sun. This goes around the sun, almost a circle, and goes around on like a big disk. But the axis doesn't point up and down perpendicular to that disk. It points at a 23 degree angle tipped away from the perpendicular. So at one point, when Earth is going around the sun, the North Pole is pointing more directly towards the sun. Six months later, the North Pole is pointing away from the sun, because the axis of rotation never changes direction in outer space. That's what causes the seasons on Earth. Mars, the axis is tipped 25 degrees off from the vertical to the plane of Mars orbit around. That angle is called the obliquity of the planet. So today, the obliquity on Mars is 25 degrees, where Earth is 23 and a half degrees, so Mars is tipped a little farther over. So it actually has a little more pronounced seasons on Mars than Earth has. And an obliquity of 30 degrees, meaning that the pole would be tipped more towards the sun, the polar regions could warm to a temperature above zero degrees C or 32 degrees Fahrenheit, so there could be liquid water on the surface of Mars. Calcium carbonate, uh, uh, ice cemented salts that we found on Mars, which form in such conditions. There's some evidence that the obliquity of Mars a few, oh, maybe a few million years ago was as much as 50 degrees, which would have mean that the North Pole is pointing much more directly towards the sun, and the whole part of way down from the polar regions could be warm enough to have liquid water on Mars. So liquid water would then have existed and we could produce this necessary to preserve life. But this is millions of years ago, not today, because today the angle is 25 degrees. <coughs> things frozen on the surface of the virus today. Methane. Methane is natural gas. We use it in our ovens, our stoves, our furnaces, we heat our houses with it. It's found on Earth here. It's, it's found in wells. Helium is found in gas wells and so forth. And CH4 is the chemical form of methane. It's a carbon with four hydrogen atoms. It's the simplest form of a hydrocarbon. Hydrocarbons, as I said earlier, are the one of the building blocks for life. But normal concentration is about a few parts, a few molecules of methane for a billion molecules of carbon dioxide. So it's a few parts per billion. But a spike about 10 times as much was observed about a year ago. A year ago. So where does methane have come from? Well, methane can be produced by biological organisms. Cows on Earth produce a lot of methane. There are a number of sources for methane here on Earth. And uh, certain geological formations ooze methane out of the ground. So does the presence of methane on Mars indicate the presence of life on Mars? Well, if it were produced by microbes on Mars, would have, the microbes would have to be well below the surface because the surface temperature is way too low today to have just anything like that on the surface. So it's still a, still a mystery where this excess amount of methane that happened, occurred all of a sudden and then disappeared. It's been observed once. We don't know where it came from. We don't know what the source is. It's one of the mysteries about Mars. So if you put everything together, what I'm talking about, all the conditions on Mars, that exist that could have supported life in the past, could life exist on Mars? The conditions are present, yes. Conditions exist to have supported life in the past, but no life has been followed on Mars yet.